Our learning objectives are to be able to provide a quick synopsis of using video analysis apps within running gate mechanics. And then we want to provide three examples of different techniques that are being seen with these deficits and provide exercise programming that you can kind of use prior to scheduling an appointment with a physical therapist for a detailed assessment. We and many other therapists are available in the clinics uh, for an evaluation of any kind of pain that may pop up along the way or a more detailed running analysis where we put these techniques to use and make a more detailed program to get you back doing what you love. First thing we're going to talk about is a quick little five minute running screen. This is something that a therapist will kind of use to begin with in an evaluation and is also something as a quick little tool that you could use to kind of assess what different mechanics just of your day-to-day -day life may be contributing or being seen not only as you're running but also as you're walking or even taking the stairs on the subway. You are going to need a step a metronome as well as some target on the wall. You're going to go through five different exercises. Each are a minute. Um, we obviously have two legs, so each exercise will be performed 30 seconds on each side. Um, each examination is a pass or fail rate. So obviously, as you're kind of taking this test, if any one of these is a fail, it would kind of be a sign that there is something that you need to be working on that may be contributing to why you're not progressing in your running training like you would like. So with each exam, we're gonna first begin with the single leg hop. You're gonna set your metronome to 160 beats per minute. You're gonna raise your arms up towards the ceiling and then place a target that's about four inches up above. And then each leg you're gonna jump for about 30 seconds. It'll be gone in two phases. So you'll do the lowering and the rising of your squat will be with going through the beat. As you're going through this test, you want to look for making sure your knee is staying aligned. So we're going from our hip, knee, ankle, kind of staying in line with that second toe. After that, you're gonna need a step. Um, if you live in a New York apartment, you're gonna be able to find one no matter what. Same thing, we're going through that um, lowering and rising of the squat through both phases. Then we're gonna go to a squat, um, sitting at the wall, holding for one minute, and then the last one is a plank. Holding for one minute, you can either go on forearms or onto your wrist, just checking for the core stability, which is also very important and a big component of being able to control your upper body with what your legs are doing while running. So the next little part that I'm going to talk about is just how we use the video analysis apps and how they're kind of important to our running analysis and our treatment um, and how you can kind of take a look at yourself at home too. Um, so important to note that these two things go really hand in hand. So doing a functional screen, getting an idea of how the whole body moves together really helps to inform what we see on the treadmill because there may be something that you see on the treadmill that may not be causing too much of an issue, but when we see it on the treadmill in your functional stuff and then obviously if it's causing some pain for you, that's something that we want to address a little bit more. Um, so typically the app that I use and Mary Frances uses is called OnForm. Uh, this is what it looks like and I have a few other apps that I typically use to look at my runners. So Metronome, Beats Per Minute Counter, um, Slow Mo is another app as well. And if I go through OnForm here, I click on it, it brings me to the home screen with all the athletes that I'm currently working with. Uh, with the free version of the app, you're able to have up to 10 videos at a time. That includes exercises, the actual analysis. So with his permission, I'm going to show you Pat. So I click on here, I can see if there's any chat, um, I can write some notes in here, um, and then I can go through the videos. As I click on, I can see a few different things. So I can start and stop the video, I can do some scrubbing to kind of get exactly the moment that I'm looking for, um, I can change the speed here, um, fast forward, whatever it might be, and I can also draw right on it. So I can draw circles, I can draw lines, um, whatever I kind of need, and the patient, once I share it with them, is also able to kind of go in and make these same edits as well and use the tools to kind of look back at the video. And now we're going to transition into more of the deficits that we've been looking at and kind of how to fix some of them. So number one is a huge buzzword in running that a lot of runners have heard of before, which is foot pronation. We're looking at the arch of the foot. Um, essentially, like if we're sitting in this position, arch would be up. Pronation is when the arch starts to drop down this way. And this is something that gets a really bad rap. Um, and if you go to any running store, they'll probably tell you that uh, you have too much, too little. Um, and it's again, something that we can see both statically standing and then dynamically while you're running. 
the thing that I'm always kind of taking note of is how much uh, and how quickly we pronate. So if you go into this huge amount of pronation, your foot's basically on the ground. Again, might not necessarily be the best for you. Um, and if you just do it the second we hit the ground and we can't control it, may kind of like clue us into, in addition to the functional exam, some things we can work on in terms of some single leg balance, some strength in those small muscles in your foot and ankle. Um, so you can see in the video here an example of that pronation and what we're looking at, um, usually observed kind of from a back view. Now, if we take a second to zoom in and kind of look at the foot, there's a couple different things that we see that we just talked about. So on each foot, really, as he's coming down here, we're seeing a little bit of that supination compensation sort of before he hits the ground. And then he's really dropping into that pronation on both sides and not really able to come out of it. So we're kind of getting the push through that lateral side of the foot as opposed to the inside that we'd be looking for. When creating an exercise program, we want to make sure that we are focusing on the key patterns that we have seen in these functional assessments, as well as not only strengthening, but creating an awareness of what your body is doing with the things that you want to be doing. We want to make sure that your program is safe and challenging. We want to incorporate multiple planes of movement. As you'll see, a lot of times all we're doing is running forward, and so our body needs this awareness and strength to be able to do multiple different patterns of movement. We also want to be able to adapt these exercises to the speed. So kind of going back to that running examination of that 160 to 180 beats per minute might not be where you're at just yet. So not only are you training that in your running, but you're also training that with your exercises. The first thing we're gonna focus on is these intrinsic foot muscles of our feet. We have four layers of muscles um, and a lot of people don't realize that we need to be strengthening them. So the first exercise that we're gonna talk about is toe yoga. We're gonna have our feet placed flat on the floor as we try to lift just our big toe up, holding it for about three seconds, we'll then lower and then lift up all of our little baby toes and holding. The big thing you're wanting to focus on too is kind of as Kyle was talking about that supination pronation, can you keep your foot nice and um, maintain that arch lift while lifting up your toes and you're not using your ankle to keep the balance. Progressing that, we're gonna go into that single leg balance. A thing that I really like to use as a resistance band to kind of remind your foot of maintaining that foot arch that we just talked about. A way to challenge this is to then, as you're standing on that one leg, take your other leg and add in tapping of your foot forward and back and then side to side, keeping that leg in nice alignment. So is our hip, our knee, and our ankle in line with that second toe? And then can you feel the muscles in the bottom of your foot doing their job? Next, we have a single leg heel raise. Just standing on one leg, making sure that that ankle is going straight in line with that second toe as it's coming up and down and we're not seeing the rocking side to side. An excellent way to challenge this is to have dumbbells or some form of resistance as you're going through the series. And then last, jumping or agility training. We have a skater jump or our lateral jumping side to side. And then I like to implement a single leg hop so that you're kind of incorporating that multi-planes of movement and challenging your body to be able to stick the landing and keep that alignment of the legs that we've been talking about while incorporating different stages of movement. Another thing to incorporate as well as kind of making sure our core is in line. So what is your upper body doing and what core alignment do you have as you're landing that jump, not only just focusing on your legs. The second episode that we'll talk about is what we call dynamic knee valgus. So knee valgus is kind of when we start to bow the leg in a little bit this way. So kind of going in towards past the midline. Um, this is something that we've seen can kind of like uh, lead to a higher risk of injury just in any kind of athlete. But with running, if we take one or two steps and the knee starts to drop into this valgus a little bit, not too big of a deal. But if you're running 160, 180 steps a minute and you're running for 30, 45 minutes and every step that knee kind of starts to drop in a little bit more, can kind of change the pressure, change how the structures are working uh, both in the hip and in the knee a little bit more. So again, we're considering this in the context of a squat, of a step down. Once we actually get on the treadmill, uh, we take a video again from the back here and we're looking at what I call the knee window. So as you're running, is there a huge space? Can I see all the way through your knees? Are they really kind of pulling apart from each other? Or are they almost knocking together and not being able to see uh, through the knees a little bit more? And knee valgus is something that, again, it's dynamic. So it's changing as we run, it's changing as we hit, as we're about to push off, uh, but essentially really controlled by some of the muscles that sit both in the knee and a lot of stuff that really kind of comes up from the hip too. So we're looking at the strength of your abductors, uh, especially uh, to kind of just see if you're able to control that. 
what I see with a lot of my runners too is they may be strong on the table, sometimes not, um, but sometimes they're really strong on the table, but as we start to look at a step down, as we start to look at a side plank and hold a little bit longer, it's harder to hold that position, and that's what translates onto the treadmill. So again, even if on a straight muscle test on the table, we see that things are a little bit stronger, maybe harder to kind of hold an alignment. We can also see that weakness in the hips can contribute to stress in other joints of our body, so it's really important to be looking at what's going above and below the knee. The glutes are some of the most important muscles when it comes to shock absorbing. So that's focusing on maintaining your strength as you slowly decelerate your jumping, which essentially is what you are doing as you're running. The first one we're gonna do is a Captain Morgan. All you need to do is find a wall. You're gonna take that inside knee and gently press into the wall as you're holding it. It's also focusing on finding that single leg balance. So is that hip, knee, and ankle in line as we're holding this, as you feel both of the sides of your hips engaging. I usually will start with people holding for about 15 seconds and then progressing up to 30, even 45 seconds, because essentially that's working for that endurance training that we want to see for our runners. The next exercise we have is a single leg squat that's going through three levels of motion. So we're gonna start in this higher level squat. You're gonna have a dumbbell in your hand and as each level, you're going to pass the dumbbell side to side. This goes into great ways of maintaining that trunk stability, incorporating some of that arm movement that as runners you have to maintain with that swing of your arms, as well as your legs going through three different motions of movement. So we'll start with a high squat, a medium level squat, and then a low squat, and then you're gonna accelerate back up. I usually will have people do around four rounds of this with about three to four sets of it. The next one I like to use is a quick snap pull down. Placing a band up above your knees is an excellent cue for just making sure that you're engaging your glutes as well as keeping that alignment of your legs. This exercise is focusing on that deceleration of movement, or as I like to call it, sticking the landing of the jump. You're gonna start in a heel raise and then quickly go down into a single leg squat. I like to start using this one with a mirror so that you're able to actually see what your legs are doing. So as you quickly pull down, you're gonna quickly land into that squat making sure that if someone were to take a picture, your hip, knee, and ankle are in line. And then the last exercise we're gonna be demonstrating today is a two to one jumping. So we will start with both feet flat on the floor. You're gonna jump off with both feet as you land onto one leg. Talking about that same alignment of our hip, knee, and ankle as we land into that single leg squat. To give it a little extra of a challenge, we're gonna add in three different directions. So you'll start jumping forward, starting with those two feet and then landing onto one. We'll then jump side to side. And then the last one is another little challenge is seeing if you can jump 90 degrees and sticking the landing. Um, a triple extension refers to that last little push off position from running. So we're looking at the hip getting extended back behind you, the knee fully straight, and then coming up and pushing off through the toes. Uh, so essentially from here, we're trying to again generate some power forward. So most of this like forward momentum that we get with running is generated from here. And it's that coordinated contraction. So we talk in this position, not just about the strength of all these muscles, but about what we call motor control. So are we able to keep the hip extended back behind you? Are we able to keep that knee extended the whole time and keep it from kind of bending in too much? And are we able to get fully up on the toes to generate that power? Here, as we come back on both sides, really, we're looking at that position. So just take a look at these few steps. And from what I'm seeing here, right as he's towing off, we don't really get into a lot of hip extension back this way. So literature kind of varies, but I've seen typically around like 10 to 15 degrees. We're at around four to five. Um, also never really gets into that terminal knee extension here. So we can see a little bit of an angle right here. Um, again, we want not, if we don't get full terminal knee extension, at least getting close to it to kind of generate some power from the quads. And then we do see them get into some nice plantar flexion there. So with these exercises, we're gonna focus a little bit more on hip mobility. The first exercise we're gonna talk about is hip cars, which stands for controlled articular rotation. So we're gonna be taking our hip joint through all planes of motion through the movement, trying to get as much motion as we can only from the hip without our back jumping in. So we're gonna start with our on our hands and knees. We're gonna take our hip, we're gonna bring it forward and then go through this entire rotation trying to go through as much motion as you possibly can 
and as slowly as you possibly can. The big thing you also want to think about in this position is that all other parts of your body are being active. So arms are pushing into the ground, engaging our shoulder girdle muscles, as well as thinking about our core engaged too. The next exercise we're going to do is a dynamic hip flexor and hamstring stretch as a lot of people living in New York will be sitting all day and then going into running. It's very important that we also are maintaining the flexibility needed for running as well. We're gonna start in this tall kneeling position, bringing one foot in front of the other. Slowly lean forward, feeling that stretch in the front of our hips, and then we're gonna hinge backward, feeling the stretch in the back. So it'll be getting both of our legs stretching in each different movement. The big thing for this stretch and what we will see in a lot of people performing it is bringing your back into play too much. So we wanna think about slightly tilting our pelvis and then maintaining our core as we lean forward and back. So it's actually a lot smaller of motion than you typically think it will be. The next exercise we're gonna be demonstrating is a runner kickback going into a hamstring curl. I like to use a resistance band for it to just help to really engage these muscles as well as for you to kind of create more of awareness of these muscles going into this motion and actually feeling them as they extend backwards into as much motion as you can. We will begin with kicking the leg backwards as well as maintaining that core stability and then adding in a small little hamstring curl as we go through the full motion. It's also an excellent exercise for the standing leg to make sure that we are standing and keeping our balance. And then the last exercise we're gonna be demonstrating is a forward lunge into our single leg RDL. Lunges are an excellent exercise to train the body to safely and efficiently transfer our weight, which is a huge component with our runners as we're essentially jumping and landing onto one foot at a time. We're gonna to try to eliminate any wobbling as we're lunging forward and transferring that weight in, in a forward and backwards motion. We'll go into the lunge, and then you're gonna shift your weight forward as we transition into that RDL. You're then gonna go back into that lunge and transition back into a single leg balance. So an excellent way to make sure that each leg has the stability that it needs. Not only do we notice the deficits on sometimes the leg that's actually causing you the pain, but it can also be that there's a lot of weakness on the other leg, and that leg is actually just overcompensating and doing too much work. The last little part that we're going to talk about here is just return to running criteria. And this can look very different for everyone. And again, if you are coming into PT, obviously you'll be working with your physical therapist to kind of determine what looks best for you. Um, typically, before I clear someone to run, uh, there's a few different things that I look at, including a single leg hop, single leg calf raise. Um, sometimes we'll look at a lateral step down, so the edge of the step trying to tap the foot and come back up. Um, and again, these are all things around, if I can get someone to do like 30 single leg hops, 30 single leg calf raises with good form, uh, make sure that there's no pain or anything, that's usually kind of an indication to me that they're going to start trying out running. Instead of having just somebody dive fully back into running too, this is where I see kind of the most problems. A lot of people will take, you know, six, six weeks, like months, uh, whatever, kind of be off of running and then just dive right back into it. You know, I used to be able to do a 45 minute run. So now I'm trying a 45 minute run again. And this is where I see a lot of injuries start to pop back up. So it doesn't have to be so black or white where you're doing just either nothing or kind of everything you're doing before. And a lot of times with runners, I'll start with kind of like a walk run progression. So maybe the first couple of runs that you do, you're doing something like 20 or 30 minutes. You're running for a minute, walking for a minute and just alternating as you go. That gets you back in the routine, you're still getting your clothes on, you're still getting outside, you're still setting aside this time to run, but not necessarily putting that full 45 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it might be of stress on your joints. We hope you will be able to you begin implementing the forms of running analysis apps as well as start to begin some basic strengthening exercises as you are training for your next race or just enjoying running as a way to exercise. We hope that throughout this webinar, you are beginning to kind of examine those functional movements that we're doing day to day as ways to kind of see the patterns that maybe you have developed throughout the years and then to begin incorporating cross training and as Kyle and I both hope, maybe begin to enjoy cross training and make it a huge component of being able to run for as long as you can. We hope that this kind of helps slim down some stuff. These are just some things that we look at too. Obviously there's a lot of other context to all of this, um, but again, like Mary Frances said, we really hope that you're able to implement some of this, fix like some issues that might be standing and get back to loving running as much as we do. I'm Mary Frances Roebuck. I am at the West 57th Street location. I am currently treating patients in the clinic as well as uh, telehealth for any running examination or just basic needs that you might need. 
Um, and my name again is Kyle Davis. I treat out of our West 44th Street Clinic, right in Bryant Park. Um, I'm also a certified running coach too. So um, if there's any coaching specific questions, um, feel free to reach out to me over email um, or come into the clinic. I'm always taking new patients as well.